Welcome back to the lab folks. What we're going to do today is a little bit of testing of some of the AliExpress gadgets that I picked up uh, in my recent uh, mailbag video. If you want to see all of those go back there and have a look at that. I think I already did a testing of some of the components as well. So I'm going to test some more today. I uh, don't know what I'll get to but we'll try our best. Uh, I want to test these. Now these are AT Mega 328Ps. Uh, that I got off of AliExpress for considerably less than what I was able to get them for at DigiKey. Uh, so I just want to check them out. Now I already did a little thing with one of them the other day and I'll show you that at the end. I got, I got some strange results but we're going to try and see if we can demonstrate them to you. But I do want to check out the functionality of the chips. Now what I thought would be a good way to do that would be to put the Arduino ISP sketch in on one of them. That, it's a rather extensive little piece of code and uh, if I can get that in there working on this and then some other functionality I can check with a separate little sketch is uh, the, uh, some of the analog functions such as being able to read an analog to digital converter and it'll test out the PWM as well. Um, so let's get started. So I've got these, these boards here. These, are, these boards are uh, the little boards I designed a few years back when I had my microcontroller business. They're basically an Arduino, but for you know, for somebody who's uh, developing quite a bit, so the chip goes into a zero insertion four socket. You got access to all the pins here with these mail headers as well, and they also supply voltage, so you can power uh, sensors and actuators directly off the board. And it's also got the standard socket here for shields. So I've got a couple of those here that are going to help out this test. And I've got this other little board here which I designed which is just a, a, a little shield that kind of helps turn it into a programmer. Now this, one, this chip here already has the um, Arduino ISP software loaded on it. Okay, I'm all set up here to program this with the Arduino ISP. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out, I'm going to put that into here and then I'll try to program another one of these using this. And then if that's successful, we'll take the one we just programmed out of here and put it into here and uh, connect up these little things to it to see if the analog functions work. And that should give it a complete test of functionality. Okay, so here we go. We're going to here go to upload using programmer. Okay, it looks like that worked. We've got no errors. So let me... Uh, Take this one out. We know that one works. Take this one out. Put it in here. If this uh, series of lights goes flash, 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 then uh, it should be good. It, that program should have gotten in there just fine. Okay, that's the signature. So now we'll get another one of these. We'll pop it in the programming socket here and then I'm going to bring up that little program okay so I've got that up on the screen there so I'll put it on the screen there for a second so that you can have a look at it and then we'll proceed to load it on up here now I'm going to again I'm going to do it via the programmer so that we can test that this chip is actually functioning properly then I'll move that over here to this board and then we'll see if program actually got in there. All right, upload using programmer. Okay, it seems to have gone in there okay and it verified. So let's get this out of here, pop it in there. Now I have to hook this up to pin nine and hook this up to analog zero. I think it's right there, isn't it? And then we can see if this works. So really all this is going to do is read this pot and read the value of it and then light up the LED using PWM and that does seem to be working just fine. So we could definitely get the program up on here. All the digital functions seem to work in these chips. Uh, the analog functions seem to be working as well. But here's something that's a little bit more interesting. Let me show you. Now I don't think I have to unplug this. I think this works okay. Uh, this is what I came across the other day. I quickly had to put one of these into use and what I did was I, I, I burned the um, bootloader onto it. So if we go over and say burn bootloader, now that should through this chip here burn the bootloader onto there. Now let's take this out here, 
put it in over here. Now this should have a bootloader on it and I should be able to send it a program. And we're going to pick the blink program and we should now just be able to send that over to here. But it doesn't. You see it blinks here a couple of times and then it gets stuck. It doesn't upload properly at all. But we're not finished yet. Pulling my hair out the other day, what I decided to do was try the Duo Milanov bootloader. So we change the board here. So get that out of here. Okay, so you can see it's blinking D13, which is what the Duo Milanov bootloader normally does. Now, if we see if we can not send up the blink program. Okay, now you can see the way it's, it's blinking. So that seems to have worked, right? So let's take this one off here right now. Now there's another little program here that we can try to send up to it. So now we're going to try and send up the fading program. What that should do is cause this light here to go up and down. And uh, we'll send that one over. It's stuck in uploading again. So somehow, some way, the bootloader got kicked off this when we uploaded the Blink program. Even if I press reset, will that help? It doesn't. So nothing, nothing actually works. Now, something else I did notice: these units here are 386 PU, not PPU. So the normal ones that you you get are the 386 PPU. But I guess Microchip, in all their infinite wisdom, decided that they created this one. And they say there should be no difference. But I'm detecting a real difference here. There must be something in the makeup of these chips that is causing this issue here. Now, I can get code on if I use a programmer to program it. No issue at all. I can get a bootloader up once only. And then I, once I use that bootloader, it wipes it out. It is pretty strange. So if you guys know anything about this, let me know. Please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to have some news on this. I've checked online and some people just say that, oh, they, they got a new Arduino. They didn't say it was a genuine Arduino. It could have been a replica from some other part of the world. And they might have uh, put their own bootloader on it so that it does work. And it does seem to be working fine. It seems to be able to do all the functions that a, a chip like this does. It follows the code, a 386p code, but it won't, it won't maintain a bootloader. So there must be something different about it. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, folks, so the next thing I want to test are these, these leads. I've been going on about these in my mailbag videos when I order more of them. I have, I think, about nine sets of them now. Most of my meters have one of these sets. And uh, I really, really like them. So first of all, let's, let's look at their features. Let's go into this in a little bit more detail than I normally do. They have nice long probe tips on them. Now, they do come with a little plastic shield. You can, I, what I normally do is I'll, I'll cut the tip off that so I can move this down on here and just get the very tip going out there. So you get a, a higher cat rating that way. And uh, they have a really, really nice neoprene or silicone, whatever you want to call it, uh, handle to them. This here has also got a very nice uh, strainer leaf to it. So it's like, a, it's like silicone over a hard plastic, like that red in there. These themselves are silicone. If you compare them, here's uh, one of the better sets from that uh, multimeter shootout that I did a little while back and this is one of the better sets from there uh, but these are PVC leads and you can see the way they they don't droop <laughs> they're rather rigid um, kind of like they feel almost exactly like the leads that you get with the fluke meter these days now these ones here they're very very limp very very nice the cable actually has a, a rating on them let me read it here I, I don't think I'll see that but let me read it under magnifying glass here. Silicone rubber, 200 degrees C, 3 kilovolts. So I can't test it to 3 kilovolts. We are going to test it to 1 kilovolt. And uh, these banana plugs here are very nice. they got a deep reach to them, so they go into most uh, receptacles very well. And, uh, well, well, let's test them. So let's, let's test them for the uh, for their insulation, see if they can withstand 1,000 volts. Um, so I've got this all set up here to do that. And I'm going to clamp this cable here with this aluminum clamp. 
I'll cap it in there fairly tight. I don't want to crush the insulation, but we'll cap it in fairly tight. And I'll put one lead from the Megger on here. Oh, don't do that. And we'll put the other lead on here. Okay, we're all set up here at 1,000 volts. I'm going to start this test and we'll let it run for an entire minute. Now what this means here, this overload, it means that the resistance of the insulation is greater than 20 gig ohms. So it's uh, been now 30 seconds and there's been no leakage at all. So it's uh, more than 20 gig ohms of insulation. We can see here that the voltage is on with that red there and it's 1019 volts. Okay, that was over a minute at 1019 volts and there's absolutely no breakdown at all in the insulation. Okay, so the next test we're going to do here is we're going to look at the resistance of the wires. So I'm going to compare them to two other sets. This here is a set from the $40 DMM shootout that I did. This is the best of them. It's got the thickest gold plating on it and they, they're not limp at all. They were the best of the leads, and I, I would imagine these would cost about six or seven bucks to replace, so around about the same price as these AliExpress leads here. And these leads here are from my Bryman. These are extremely nice leads. They're some of the best performing leads around. Probes on these are really nice too. They're kind of similar to these ones. They're not, you know, plasticky stuff like this. They've got a nice soft uh, feel to them. So these are extremely nice probes. So if these do anywhere near what these do, we'll be very, very happy. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Let's let's try these ones here first, and uh, keep your eye on the meter. I'm gonna put a meter up there, so keep your eye on the meter up there. And uh, let's see. I squeeze here to make them those resistance. So 40, 50 milliohms, 47, 48. So in, in there, it's that's actually not too bad. All right, um, okay, now let's try these these really nice Bryman leads. I, I can't fault these at all. Very nice. See that? 25 milliohms. So half the resistance of these ones over here. That's a huge improvement. That's what you pay your money for, plus, you know, the nice silicone. These are, these are nice and, and limp, too. So they're very nice leads to, to, to work with. I think these leads might be just a tad longer than those ones. I'm not sure, but uh, let's give uh, let's give these ones a go here. Okay, if they excuse me, I had somebody come to the door right in the middle of all this, so I'm back again now. So here we go. Check these ones out. Okay, these ones are around about 36 milliohms, so about halfway in between these ones and these ones. So they're they're doing pretty good there. 33, 32, yeah. Excellent. Very low resistance. Now there's one more test I want to do. And I'm going to have to plug them directly into the meter for this. So hold on a second while I get that done. These are very, very, very sharp. Do not let your children play with these. These are extremely sharp. Here I have a, a metal plate with enamel on it. And it's just a matter of putting the leads on it and applying a little bit of pressure and you're right through. Okay. And not only that, Here's a, a silicone mat that's, uh, you know, about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And if I can get through that, so we can get through the silicone and the enamel, no problem at all. So they're, they're insulation piercing as well on top of everything else, whereas these ones might be a bit, but these ones aren't. So if you just want to upgrade your, your regular leads or if you need to, uh, you know, buy a set, to replace some that are old and broken. These leads make an excellent choice. All right, folks. So again, if, if, you, if you know anything about these ATmega386PU chips, let me know. I, I, they seem to work just fine, except for with respect to a bootloader. They don't accept a bootloader very well. And again, these, uh, these leads are excellent value. All right, folks. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.